Good afternoon. The time now is 5 p.m. and I call to order this public hearing. <clears throat> please turn off all your cell phones and electronic devices and would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a moment of quiet reflection. Would the clerk please read the public hearing notice? Notice of public hearings, County of Orange. Public notice is hereby given that the legislature of the County of Orange will meet at the SUNY Orange New Pulse campus, I'm sorry, Newburgh campus, on the 27th day of February 2019 at 3 o'clock p.m. on that day to hold the first of two public hearings to receive public comment on the proposed adoption of updates to the county comprehensive plan. The legislature of the County of Orange will also meet at the Legislative Chambers in the Orange County Government Center, 255 Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, on the 20th day of March, 2019, at 5 o'clock p.m. on that day to hold a public hearing to receive public comment on the proposed adoption of updates to the County Comprehensive Plan. The originally scheduled public hearing on the 20th day of February, 2019, at 5 o'clock p.m. in the Legislative Chamber, 255 Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, was rescheduled due to inclement weather and will be held on March 20th at 5 o'clock p.m. This notice was published in the February 8th and March 1st issue of the Orange County Post, Strauss Newspapers, Warwick Advertiser, Photo News, News of the Highlands, the Cornwall Local, and the Gazette, and the February 13th and February 27th issue of the Hudson Valley Press, Times Community Newspapers, Walk Hill Valley and Mid-Hudson Times, and the Warwick Valley Dispatch. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tom Faggione. I'm chairman of the Rules, Enactments, and Intergovernmental Relations Committee and legislator for the 13th District. I welcome you to the official public hearing on the amendments to the 2019 Orange County Comprehensive Plan. The legislature wanted to bring this public hearing to the people, so we held one public hearing in two sessions. The first was held at SUNY Orange in Newburgh, and this one will conclude here today in the legislative chambers. This is a one public hearing, so each person will be allowed to speak once. Anyone wishing to speak, please sign up with the legislative office staff. When your name is called, please come to the podium, give your name and the town in which you reside for the record. Three minutes will be limited for all speakers. That's three minutes. We will gladly accept your written comments today. Please hand them to the clerk and the staff. We will also accept your written comments up to 5 p.m. at the close of business on March 29th. At this time, I'd like to introduce David Church, Orange County Commissioner of Planning, to give us a short summary of the proposed amendments to the comprehensive plan. Commissioner. Red light means on. I'm so confused already. Um, so thank you. Uh, as a summary of uh, the proposal in front of the legislature, uh, consistent with the Orange County Charter and Administrative Code, uh, it's a requirement of my position uh, to work with the County Planning Board on every five years reporting to the legislature the status of the county comprehensive plan. Uh, that plan and its procedure for Review and adoption is defined in New York State general municipal law. Um, so we're following both county charter, administrative code, and, and, or, and, and state uh, general municipal law. Um, we've also prepared with the proposal as background uh, a draft environmental assessment form or seeker documentation. Um, the other required uh, procedural obligation is to receive public comment, which is uh, largely what's about this evening. Uh, the, Department uh, with staff, I'm joined by Megan Tennerman, who's a planner with the department, and Julie Richmond over here is the deputy commissioner uh, who oversaw the project. Um, we've partnered with the county planning board and others uh, to uh, bring this forward. Uh, and the planning board, uh, consistent with general municipal law, held, held its own uh, public hearing late last year. Uh, staff then did a full draft 
of what's in, proposed in front of you. Uh, and we're working with the legislature, the Rules Committee, uh, Chair, uh, Committee Chair of Agione. Uh, we've done, this is the second of two session public hearing rescheduled due to weather uh, with the original scheduling. There are two components that are proposed uh, for the update of the county comprehensive plan. The county's had a comprehensive plan for several decades. It's gone through various iterations. The first component uh, will essentially uh, will fully replace the 2003 core document comprehensive plan. Essentially uh, eliminate that and replace it with what we're presented to you as, the, as a new primary or core document plan that's been submitted in first draft form. Uh, the second is the first ever transportation element or a chapter to the county plan uh, of just about transportation and public transit issues. That plan would be seen as a chapter or supplement to the adopt, adopted county comprehensive plan and would supplement a similar approach we've taken on subjects in specific chapters previously approved by you, the legislature on open space, agriculture, on a greenway compact, on economic development, and on water. So this would add a transportation element. So the proposal is a two-part, a new core document and a new chapter on transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We will now hear from the public. Each person will have three minutes to speak. First on our list, Tracy Shu. Can you hear me? Hello, my name is Tracy Shu. I'm one of those residents you hear about that um, grew up here and loved it so much that I decided to raise my family here. I live two houses down from my childhood home and my parents still reside there. And like many people um, at the time I was raising my young kids, took for granted a lot of the open spaces that were around. And then when development started increasing in the early 2000s, uh, my neighbors and I felt the need to start a nonprofit organization um, to raise awareness about much needed environmental protection uh, because new growth was impacting important resources. In this case, it was our groundwater at risk. Um, the organization is called the Preservation Collective and we're still active in Monroe and Chester area. And I'm here tonight to submit a letter on their behalf um, regarding the um, comprehensive plan. But I also wanted to take a few moments to say some words um, about the impacts of the county and the economy growing. We all can see that we are consuming our natural resources at an alarming rate and producing more waste than we can handle. As the population of our area increases, more development will follow changing our rural landscape, which is what draws so many people to live and visit here. Luckily, over the years, we've had some hardworking land conservation groups out there, but times are changing, and they are now being outbid by wealthy developers. So now more than ever, municipalities could use your help. Just this week, I attended a Monroe Town Board meeting, and the New Jersey New York Trail Conference explained how one of the county's popular regional trail network is threatened to be cut off by future development. These trails are an asset to the county and enhances the quality of life of residents. And now time is running out to save this important trail link. I know there are obvious concerns about traffic and transportation that comes with all the new growth the county is and will be experiencing. But remember, as you updated your plan, you did do a public outreach portion, and many residents told you that the open space and community character are still a top priority. And I know the county thought so as well when you had the open space funding years ago. So while you're deciding what new supplemental chapters to write, please keep in mind that you have old chapters like the open space plan that's 10 years old. There are still economically important lands out there like watersheds and farmlands, historic and scenic areas of significance. Um, but that window of opportunity is closing. And we need to create greenway corridors that link up state park lands to other protected lands. The county's open space fund was available to help municipalities years ago. And I'm hoping it gets revamped and helps save important resources now. So yes, figuring out how people are gonna get around the county does need attention. And as development increases, we still need to continually identify those areas that should be protected. And more importantly, we need the means to protect them. And that's, the municipalities can't do it alone. So open space and land conservation are vital to the quality of life of residents. We need clean air and water, and natural areas help with flooding and pollution. These are all essential to the health and well-being of the community. Thank you. And who do I give the letter to? Thank you.
Next, we have George Lyons. And George, when you come, please state the town you live in as well. Thank you. Um, I live in the uh, village and town of Goshen. So actually, I came here today to find out about what the plan was. I was hoping that uh, David Church or someone was going to go in more detail as far as what was going on, but apparently that is not happening today. Is that correct? Uh, George, the document is available online on the county website. I see. Okay. So um, since I have not read that, I do have a few things that I just wanted to touch base with. Um, in the uh, village of Goshen now where I live, um, I have a little bit of a story to tell you. There's a couple that I've known for years and years and years, and they're now in aging in place. Uh, at this particular point, uh, neither one of them can drive a car. So effectively what has happened is they've kind of come be become trapped, I guess, in this area. Because if you can't drive in Orange County, at least in this particular Orange County, you're really compromised. So the first thing that I would like to just uh, report or actually give to you folks is the fact that I think there has to be more public transportation that is available to people such as this. The second thing that I wanted to touch base with is um, some specific areas. Um, 17M is um, an area that I travel quite frequently, and I'm sure many of you people travel 17M. And it's becoming more and more congested, and I think that has to be taken a look at and improvements to the 17M area. As you can uh, notice from my back, I am involved in EMS, and I, I didn't come here today. I'm going on call at 6 o'clock, so that's why I got dressed before I came here. But anyway, uh, the only thing that I'm saying there is, is you know, there's some um, horrific accidents that happen on 17M. In fact, one happened, uh, I believe it was last week, where a uh, woman was uh, hurt quite bad in a head-on collision. So. In a transportation mode, I think that area has to be looked at and improved. And then uh, finally, which everybody has heard about, but I figured I'd throw that in, and that is the third lane for uh, Route 17 to accommodate all the growth that's going around. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Bonnie Rum. Good evening, early evening. Um, I might suggest you want to change the times of some of these meetings. I was at the Newburgh meeting. It was listed from 3 to 5, and who can make those meetings? Um, first of all, I'm from Blooming Grove, I'm, and I'm with the group Preserve Blooming Grove. And um, Mr. Church, I have a question for you, because I understand you called a meeting in South Blooming Grove, in the village, um, to talk about the bus service. Is that correct? You had a private meeting. Let me just say, Bonnie, it is correct. If I could just for one moment, this is a public hearing. For okay. The statement. This so here's, here's the thing. Thank you. Uh, this semi-private meeting was with a group of um, with the mayor, one other board member, the town supervisor, uh, Mr. Church, and a group up from the earth ultra-Orthodox community that is residing in South Blooming Grove. They want a bus service. Um, they got one, it was permitted, then it was, it's in litigation now because they disregarded all the permits uh, with unsafe driving and all of this. That's going on in litigation. But the fact that a meeting was called and the rest of the residents were not involved or informed of it is a problem. When uh, also, Mr. Church made a statement that if you d whether you do it or don't do it, if you don't give us the bus service, we're going to get it from the county anyway. That's a threat. Uh, you're trying to infringe your attitudes and desires or somebody else's on a community. Ma'am, if it's I regarding may, these comments are directed the towards the comprehensive plan and the and well, it's yeah, part of the, bus service is part of that transportation. So when you are considering um, servicing one group as opposed to the rest of the group when you're voting, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to remind you that 
um, there is a group in Orange County that's had a very strong influence on um, votes and decisions made, whether it's in public or not. And that group uh, did not successfully support the candidate for a state senate. They lost. Their candidate did lose quite handily. So I hope you keep that in mind that when you leave out most of the community in your decisions for the com comprehensive plan or anything else, there's going to be, voters are going to notice. Uh, when you're talking about the comprehensive plan, I hope you keep in mind that fresh water coming in and wastewater going out is paramount. It does not observe geographical lines that are man-made. It's all what it is. And you need a hydrogeologist, I would assume, to really let you know. So when you're talking about part of this plan with overdevelopment that can be um, occurring uh, to the benefit of the developers and not to the community, please consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Maria Patrizio. Good evening. I'm Maria Patrizio. I'm a resident of the town of Wallkill, and I'm a family court attorney at the Legal Aid Society of Orange County, right across the street. I've been there for 20 years, and since I got there, there's been an ongoing issue problem with my clients not being able to get to court. A lot of my clients come from the city of Newburgh, the city of Middletown, the city of Port Jervis, and it is always a difficulty getting them to and from court. So I'm asking that you consider a bus service around the county um, that would get people to this building, basically, at um, around 9 in the morning and then around 1 in the afternoon for morning court and afternoon court and as well as taking people home at the end of the morning session which is usually about 12.30 and the end of the afternoon session which is at about 4.30. Now I've heard rumors that the Office of Indigent Legal Services, a state level agency, may have some funding available so that might be something that um, we could look into as a, a funding source for this bus. Um, I'd ask that the bus service itself be free, if at all possible, because uh, I represent, by definition, indigent people. They really don't have extra money um, to pay for transportation to and from their home to the court. And, and I've heard of interesting ideas for funding a bus service, such as having uh, corporate sponsorship or advertising either on the outside of the bus or on inside of the bus. And I'm sure that there are ways to absorb the cost, such as those ways. Um, and the cost is borne in various ways. I, I believe the county sometimes has to pay for taxis back and forth. Um, and people are always scrambling to uh, to find uh, ways back and forth. They, and, and as somebody said, in Orange County, you're really trapped if you don't have a car. And my clients can't afford cars. Um, and it, it makes life very, very difficult for them. So I'd ask that as many other communities in our country have, that we have a bus service. It would be um, to start out going from the, the major city areas to Goshen would be great. But people get stuck in little rural hamlets in our county. And, and as uh, the gentleman said, that's difficult for the elderly and, and people who don't have cars. So I would urge you to do anything you can to bring public transportation to Orange County. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Sandra Rothenberger. Hi, I live in Chester, and um, I'm going to talk about the transportation. It's totally lacking here in Orange County. I haven't lived in this area very long. <clears throat> Wherever I've lived, you could go in town, you could catch a bus, you could go to the next town, you could go to the end of the town on bus service. It would be 50 cents. Also, 
I think you missed the boat on the transportation thing because you have overdeveloped this area and you forgot about the infrastructure of the roads. 17M is a horror. 17 is a horror. 207, it gets so backed up, you can't get out of the side roads. And I understand you want to make Montgomery a transportation hub. Montgomery is a historical town. It will be destroyed. 416, that's not for trucks. There's a school along there. Are they going to go 15 and 20 miles an hour? Can a truck even go that low? And also, um, it just, you're building a big warehouse, Medline, and supposedly Sailfish, which is Amazon, bringing in hundreds of cars, hundreds of trucks. The road infrastructure just is not there. I think you better make more planning as to where you put these warehouses, where you put all this development, because this is not economic development for the area. You're ruining Goshen, you're ruining Montgomery, you're ruining many more other towns, and warehouses are not economic development for the towns. I would like to know if they're getting large pallets, they're hiring hundreds of people, minimum wage, and those that are in senior supervisory, that's not a living wage, 31 and 32,000. I mean, you cannot live on that in this county. You have to do something with local bus service, and you have to make sure that when you build these big warehouses and these big projects, that the infrastructure is in place. And that's my complaint. I just. I have never seen such traffic as there is here. And it's just horrible. People are leaving New York. They can't get around. They can't afford it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Deb Kaur. Hi. Thank you. I'm Debbie Kaur. I live on Sarah Wells Trail. I have a horse farm. Um, we train horses and we also train children and we keep them really safe. And um, I'm, I'd like to continue to protect the open space here in our town and our county. I'd like you to please look into doing another um, PDR project, please, because I personally would like to preserve my farm and my neighbor would like to preserve her farm as well. But we can really only do this and continue to live here um, if we can have uh, another PDR project. Um, I'd like to also talk about the quality of life for the residents here in our, in our county, that um, Legoland is not going to improve the quality of life here for the people in our county. Neither are gigantic warehouses. The only people that are actually thriving from this are, is the Orange County Partnership, which I would like to ask you to please remove them from the page of the government, because they are not a government entity, as they have said. And I'd like to, if not, I would like to start at being able to advertise for free my business on the Orange County government pages as well, okay? And all of my businesses. And I think any business should be able to, as long as they stay there, you get, gotta get them off the, off the website, please. I'd like to look into also preserving the parks and creating a united trail system throughout the county that connects. I, uh, I know that you, there is, a David, isn't there, um, David Church? Is, is there a comprehensive organization where all the towns work together, maybe, where a lot of times I see that they're all kind of spinning their wheels and there's the gears don't connect. So it'd be really nice if there'd be more communication and collaboration between the towns. Um, I also would like to talk about um, 
the uh, that tonight today's meeting. I really wish that there would have been a red line version of the comprehensive plan online so that we could have actually seen exactly what the changes were because I believe it was at least 600 pages. So it really would have been a lot less time consuming for me if you would have just redlined it. And when I did call, they said that it's not available to the public. Well, guys, we're the ones who elected you the public. We should have the right to see what the changes are. We're the ones paying taxes here. And, and please provide us with um, a redlined version. I'd also like to ask that these meetings be live streamed and be available to the public so that while you're doing your legislation and and talking, we'd like to, we can, and if we can't physically get here, we could watch it at home. A lot, Poughkeepsie does it. They really are very, very um, um, good at it. If you look at the town of Poughkeepsie, they have all their meetings are live streamed. And we appreciate that, being able to do that. But thank you very much for the opportunity to talk. And if you could please, you know, uh, be more transparent to the, to the taxpayers, we'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Rose Wright. Good evening. My name is Rose Wright. I didn't have any intention of speaking. However, I do have something to say. I agree with my neighbors. We should be more transparent as to us being neighbors. It is not fair to us as a community to have things hidden when we live here. I live here and I love it here. I come from the city. However, since I've been here, I have nothing but good things to say about my town of Goshen. And it's a shame that we live here and y'all not letting us know what is going on. I went to two meetings today and out of these two meetings, everyone is saying, it's here, it's there, but it's a secret what's being built. It's a secret what's doing this, it's a secret. So what's the purpose of having these meetings if it's a secret? We live here, where's the secret? I would like for it to be not a secret what is being built, what is being done to my community, because it is not fair for us to pay our taxes, us to sit here and say, let's have a meeting. What's the purpose of a meeting if we're not gonna be transparent? So. With that being said, I thank you all for having the time to listen to us, but not just listen, let's make it happen. Let us see what's going on. Some people like me may like some things that's going on versus not being sure that what is going on. So with that being said, have a good evening and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next we have Gabe Berlin. Hello everyone, my name is Gabe Berlin. I live in the city of Newburgh. Uh, I spoke at the last meeting, but just to reintroduce myself. If I can, Gabe, uh, this, <clears throat> just for reference, this is uh, the continuation of the first public hearing. This is one public hearing in totality, and the rules were stated in that meeting that anyone who spoke in the first public meeting, uh, that was your three minutes to speak. Oh. If you have additional, and we're not trying to silence you, but if you have additional comments, you can leave them with the clerk. Uh, but for the purposes, these were the rules that were stated then and continue through today, so. Okay. I just want to thank Rob Parrington. He met with us after the last time I spoke. He came and met with our committee and answered all our questions and was extremely helpful. So thank you to Rob Harrington and to Kevin Darian Lujan, who's also been coming to our meetings. Um, I have right. a bunch of bus surveys. Who should I get those to? You can leave that right with the clerk right up there. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Next, and I apologize if I mispronounced, Marianne Marischal. Hi there. Um, my name is Marianne Marischal. I live in the city of Newburgh. I've lived here uh, or in the city of Newburgh for 11 years. And I'm going to read this because I'm not great at public speaking, but. Um, I would like to comment on the transportation center in Newburgh or the lack thereof. <clears throat> what 
uh, what I believe or what I thought to be the transportation center located on 17K in Newburgh, in reality, houses a business operation run by the Coach Shortline Bus Company and is exclusive to any other transportation company, transportation service company. When one inquires about any other transportation option, one is turned away, one being me. Even the drivers are forbidden to use the bathroom facilities. I had wondered why the ridership was low on the Beacon Stewart Airport shuttle that stops there briefly. And after speaking with various bus drivers and riders and inquiring myself, it became clear. In addition to the obvious exclusion of other transportation providers' information, there is no advertising or information about the shuttle. There is no signage on the building itself or on the bus, uh, the bus stand that's there. There are no maps or no schedules visible. If this is indeed an Orange County owned and operated building meant to provide transportation services and information that is easily and clearly accessible to those like myself that rely on public transportation, there's much improvement to be made. I am hopeful that these public hearings will bring about these improvements and address the need for a transportation center in the city of Newburgh and accessible to those that live in it. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Marianne. And your public speaking was fine. Very good. Next we have, and I apologize, Kippy, Kippy Boyle. I get that right, Kippy? All right, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest to, so that you can clarify. At the Newburgh uh, public hearing, I spoke not on behalf of Kippy Boyle, but I spoke, I read something that was for somebody else. Do, am I allowed to speak for myself? Yes, you may. Thank you. Um, I'm here, I'm a member of the uh, Conservation Advisory Council, the city of Newburgh, and also the Transportation uh, Committee. So I just have a few comments. Uh, first of all, I really liked the core values that are, the four core values that are given at the beginning of the comprehensive plan. Um, I thought that was really well done and so my comments are meant to try to advance those values. Um, there was a, a map of a, the high growth areas in the county uh, and the Newburgh area, not just the city, but the Newburgh area was one of those designated high growth areas. However, on that same map, there were transportation hubs identified, eight of them. And one of the hub, there was no hub in this high growth area. So I thought that that's something that doesn't make sense. Um, the Newburgh Beacon Ferry was only minimally recognized in the comprehensive plan as a mode of, con of transportation that uh, can grow and be very helpful to uh, residents of Orange County and Dutchess County. Um, and I say that not only for the uh, commuters that use it every day, but for um, the advanced tourism, which was a big section of the comprehensive plan. Um, if, we have, uh, if we have better s bus service, the potential for using that ferry and then uh, connecting with buses to take people to many of the various things. You know, maybe they want to do apple picking and they're from the city, but they have no way, you know, they can get to the ferry, but then what happens? So uh, weekend ferry transportation would immensely help us from both tourism and there are many people, some of them here, who work in the city on weekends. Um, open space. Uh, climate change is a, a big factor that we're all looking at. And I would like to see some kind of county legislation that would uh, be part of this plan that, uh, you know, that clear cutting, there's been so much clear cutting for development throughout the county. And I think legislation is needed that says when uh, clear cutting occur occurs, there has to be one for one tree replacement. 
we're losing our canopy cover, we're losing open space, and uh, the air, you know, it's going to affect air quality, quality of life. So I would really like to see more emphasis on that. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have, and I apologize, is it Candido Bido? Oh, I'm sorry about that. As you can see, my last name, it gets uh, sometimes mispronounced, so I apologize. Okay. Um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you. Um, I live, I'm a resident of Orange County, and I want to underscore a couple of things that are part of the comprehensive plan. Um, transportation, for sure. A lot of the farmers in my area, by the way, I live in Crawford, the town of Crawford. Pine Bush is one of the hamlets in my, in my community. And a lot of the businesses are not doing well because people are not traveling to our area. So transportation just makes sense for us to really um, make it consistent, comprehensive, public. Uh, we need a lot of different, um, the gentleman spoke about for the elderly, but the youth that are getting around is also in a situation. Okay, so transportation is one of those things that I really would love to, for you guys to underscore and make a really good comprehensive um, transportation plan for Orange County, particularly in my area. The farmers in my area are strapped for cash because people are not buying their products. You know, so it makes sense. It's economic development right there. Okay, so um, in terms of transportation, I'd like to see a better plan. Okay, the other thing that I'd like to see is also the IT. I, um, I work in the city. I love to be connected. <laughs> and so a lot of our towns are not connected. So that part is also lacking. We would love to have internet connection or everywhere we go. I mean, this is the 21st century. We need to move on into the 21st century. So if you can also work around you know, that area, I didn't see a really good plan in terms of what you have right now. Um, I'll be willing to sit down with anybody here and work on that as well. Um, and then the last one that I really want to underscore is also um, help for a lot of the um, daycare, um, child care issue in our community. There's a lot of women that work. There's a lot of women that do a lot of things. And we need places where we can take our kids to and, and, and things for them to do. You know, our youth, um, they need to be busy. Their minds need to be busy after school, OK? So those are the three areas that I really would like for you to really look again into it and really make it a better plan for Orange County that would take us into the 21st century. I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. It's good to see you. Bye. Thank you. Next, we have Jessica Goki. Before I start, I just want to kind of bring up a ad secretary administration type issue. I've asked for a red line version, so to speak, of the proposed changes. Um, I've repeatedly asked for a red line version. And to, for an example of what I've asked for that I haven't been able to get to come here as an informed citizen is the CPPA Act, which I commented on. Uh, Metzger and Skoufis held a public hearing about this in New Paltz a couple weeks ago. So they emailed us the act as it exists, and then I guess green line would be the right version here because in green were the proposed changes. So what I got from you guys instead is like a very nice color brochure um, on a broad, like broad sweeping changes you have proposed to the plan, but maybe, I'm, maybe I have too much free time, but I'd like to go line by line and look at the individual changes to each line and read it because even something that sounds as good as the, the climate uh, Protection Act has a lot of, of faults in there if you go line by line. Will that be available to us at another point in time where we can comment on it before it's voted on? We don't have a red line version. That's not how it was submitted to the Orange County Legislature. We have the document that was submitted and uh, which is now available on the website. So we do not have I don't even know whether there is a red line version of it. Uh, so that's not how we received it from the planning department and the uh, planning board. I do have comments. This is just a question about that before I, I, I put my comments. Hi, Mr. Church, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. Just for clarification, 
Um, I under completely understand what a red line version is. Okay. Um, and for the record, I did not ask him, so he's not in trouble. No, but I did get inquiries. <laughs> um, just to clarify this, Chairman, if that's all right. Um, we're, not we're not actually editing the current version. We're, we're deleting and replacing it. So there is no red line version. So there's two elements. One, there is no existing document to redline. It's a, it's a draft. Once we receive public comments, we will edit it and redline it, and we can make that available prior to the legislature considering it. So we're in the first draft phase of the transportation element. There's nothing to have redlined. There's no prior document to edit. It's, okay, because I, I heard proposed changes to the master plan. So it's, for me, correct. that it's sounds a, like the, the Climate Protection Act with the proposed changes where they had what was staying was green and what was not staying was crossed off. Correct. So we're, change, we're amending it by adding two documents. They don't exist now. So is this a draft? Is this excuse a, a me? Scoping this is session? just for you to uh, provide public comment. So you can talk to Mr. Church later on about your red line version issue. Okay, uh, but if you have public comments, you can make them now to the body. Thank you. So the so just for clarification, there is no red line version because these are fresh drafts of new documents. In one case, that don't exist yet. That I don't have to comment. No, they're online. Okay. All right. Well, let's get started. Um, one of the things I noticed was uh, your priority growth area map. Um, your priority growth area map is, is over there, um, but it's missing. I have side by side here um, part of the comprehensive plan for the county. It states it includes the 2004 and 2003 Open Space um, and Farmland Protection Act or Open Space Act. Part of that is uh, outlines the Wallkill River watershed. This microphone works really well. It'll stand back a little bit. Um, and when you take that and you overlay it with your priority growth areas, um, your proposed changes, proposed new document, whatever it is that you're proposing, um, and you actually read the, the open space plan of the county, um, the proposed changes conflict with the statements um, from the open space um, document. Um, for example, uh, your proposed changes state, um, while some growth areas include parkland, um, it is, please note, it is not the county policy to target parkland or areas around parkland for development. Similarly, the county has recommended areas adjacent to the Hudson, Delaware, and Wallkill Rivers to be priority growth areas. This recommendation does not intend to direct additional development to sensitive and already developed riverfront areas, but instead, aims to prioritize investment in infrastructure um, and amenities to these areas. I'm from the same area where uh, Candido is from in, in Crawford, and I have the same concern she has, but I could throw a rock and hit where the largest warehouse in Orange County is being proposed along the banks of the Wall Kill River, in fact, 50 feet from that, and it is in uh, direct conflict with the statements of the open space plan. Um, may I email my extensive research on the dangers I think are, are contained in here to you guys, and will that go on the record as part of this public hearing if I email them to you? And as how I long stated uh, in Newburgh and I stated here today, uh, we will accept your written comments today, and we can also expect, uh, ex we can take them up until March 29th, so you can email them. Okay. We will, we will take them, yes. Okay, and just to follow up, will, will there be another when we do come up with the actual new plan that's gonna replace the current plan? Um, when will we have a, a, an opportunity to review that, review that as citizens before it's voted on? It will, uh, when, when the chairman determines that uh, the document is uh, substantially complete or completed by the planning department, then it will be presented to the rules committee. Um, and so at that point in time, it will be available on the website. And but we'll we then have, have a chance to comment on it before it's voted on? Um, uh, that will, that determination has yet to be made. It depends upon the nature and the number of changes that are made to the document. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have Chris Mealy. Good evening, thank you for letting me address you this evening. Um, let me try to refocus some of these things. The comprehensive plan is a wonderful document. David's done a fantastic job on this. I have to say that to begin with. But let's talk about what our currencies are in Orange County. Let's put our business hats on for a second. 
The, people, the reason people want to come to Orange County is because of our open space, okay? It is a huge currency. It is a huge asset. The amount of open land that we have makes us a very desirable place. Every time you use up more and more of that land with gigantic warehouses or gigantic whatevers, um, you're taking away some of the negotiable currency that we have to bring in really good businesses. We don't need businesses. What I'd like to see in Orange County and what I'd like to see encouraged in these growth areas is renewable stuff. I want to see people have careers. I want to see people be able to advance to a $200,000 a year job. There's no reason why we have to keep people at $40,000 a year. All right, we have to keep that in mind. Our currency is our open land. Something very remarkable happened in Hamptonburg. We had a warehouse that wanted to come in on farmland, on choice farmland, closed down a farm road, and uh, people sometimes, on the, one of the people, at least on this legislator, has made fun of Hamptonburg for wanting to do this, all right, for, for entertaining this. What happened is 350 residents of that town, of that area, came up to a town meeting. And one after one, they came to the, to the, to the dais and they said, I live here because of open space. I live here because it's relaxing. I live here because I can go out and see rolling hills. And I'm willing to pay more money for that privilege. Okay, they're not interested in having their taxes lowered. They're interested in a quality of life. They're interested in fresh air. They're interested in good vegetables. They're interested in good soil. Those are your currencies here in Orange County. Your additional currency is water. Okay, it's a limited resource, as is our fresh air. It's a limited resource. It's our currency. Don't give it away willy-nilly to one person or to one corporation. Corporations look out for themselves. I know the heads of many, when I was in business, I dealt with the heads of many mega million Fortune 500 corporations. And I can tell you, they don't care that much about you. They care about their profits and their stockholders if they're public corporations. I know that firsthand. So people move here because of the open space. People move here because they have better health. They, have a low, they can lower their blood pressure. I know many business people said, I was told to come up here because I can lower my blood pressure. My doctor said it was dangerous for me to be a businessman in New York City. Understand, when you look at these comprehensive plans and when you look at developments and when you look at things in this county, I truly want you to consider that open space is our currency. Thank you. Thank you. That is our lineup of public comment for today. I'll remind everyone here, uh, if you do have written comments, we will ex accept them today. And also written comments will be accepted up to the close of business at 5 p.m. on March 29th. This will conclude the public hearing. I thank you all for attending and everyone have a good evening.